Hello, Abnormal Family. It's Saturday, and I'm doing a drop today. Um, we're going to be going live tonight at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. I hope to see you guys there tonight to support us and uh, engage in the uh, conversation. If you have not subscribed to our channel, I'd like to invite you to subscribe, ring the bell to get our future stuff. we got a lot of cool stuff coming. And last but not least, please reach down and hit that like button. It helps our uh, community grow, and it helps our videos grow. And like I said, we're a family here, so we would like to invite you to join our family and subscribe for all the extras and things that we have coming in the future. Let's get to today's encounter, guys. All right. The story I'm about to tell happened when I was about 11 or 12 years old. So it would have been around the year 1999 or 2000. I live in central Sweden. My parents had been divorced for many years. And the day of my encounter, me and my younger sister was visiting our dad at his farm where he was raising slaughter pigs for one of the country's bigger meat producers. I have always loved animals, and I loved helping out on the farm, feeding the animals and cuddling with the piglets. My dad had built the pig housing just a couple of years before. I will quickly explain the layout of the buildings. When you enter through the main entrance, you'll find yourself in the beginning of a long corridor with four doors on the right side and two doors on the left. At the door at the end of the corridor leading out to the back side of the building, the first door on the right lead to an office or a staff room and the second door to a storage room. The following two doors on the right and the last door on the left lead to the three what we called pig stables called stable number one, two, and three, which with 48 separate pins were the pigs. The pigs were housed. The first door on the left went to the barn where we stored food and straw for the animals. The way that the farm worked was that we received pregnant sows a week or two before they was expected to give birth, and when the piglets was old enough, the sows would send to the farms uh, to the rest of the few months before they were impregnated again. The piglets stayed with us until they were old enough to be sent to the slaughter. Now back to the story. The day of my encounter was a very cold winter day. It probably December or January, the ground was covered with a thick layer of snow and the sky was clear. A perfect winter day and me and my sister had arrived at our dad's place around lunchtime the same day. This afternoon, we were in the stables helping out with the chores. I remember that to stable number one. We had slaughter pigs that was maybe a couple of months old in a stable number two. We had pregnant sows that was expected to give birth at any day. Stable number three was empty and had just been cleaned and prepared for the new delivery of the pregnant sows to arrive within a few days. I had just fed the pigs in stable number two when my dad told me that he had found one of the slaughter pigs injured. 
It was quite common for them to get injured when they were in that teenage stage of life, trying to establish dominance and being very eager and playful. But it was unusual for them to get any serious injuries. Usually it was just smaller scratches and bite marks. There was a big manure tank approximately 15 meters in diameter and several meters deep partially buried in the ground with just a, a meter or two at the top of the ground level. We carried the pig to the other side of the tank and my dad brought the butchery bolt gun. I refused to stay out there while my dad did what he had to do. I went back inside and continued feeding the pigs and listened to music, trying to get my mind off of what was happening to the poor pig. After a while, my dad came to tell me that he needed to go to his workshop to get some tools to fix the gate that he was working on, and he asked if I wanted to stay here or come with him. His workshop, where he stored and maintained his agriculture machines and equipment, was a ten-minute drive from the farm. He said he would be back in a half an hour, so I decided to stay. I helped him carry some tools to his car and then watched him and my sister drive away. It was mid-afternoon, but it was already dark outside, and... I was now alone in the farm, but I didn't mind that. We live just south of the Arctic Circle, and in the winter we only have a few hours of sunlight from the late morning to have a few hours of sunlight from to the afternoon. So I was used to the short winter days and the darkness. The sky was still clear, but now covered with bright stars, and the moon looked bigger, brighter, and more beautiful than usual. I went back inside to the staff room to eat one of the sandwiches my dad had brought for us. After that, I went back to start cleaning out the pens in the stable in number one and two. The stables had slatted floors that could be opened to scrape down the feces and straw, which was then automatically transported out to the open manure tank on the back side. Because of the freezing temperatures, I first had to go out to the back and start the circulation pump to keep the liquid manure from freezing in the pipes. I went out back, opened the hatch to the control panel, and started the pump. I closed the hatch and looked across the manure tank at the pig laying there in the snow. A dim light shone through the windows from the lights inside from the moon lit up area. The snow under the pig's head was now colored red and I actually felt a bit relieved that it was no longer in pain. I went back inside and started to clean up the pens and after about a half an hour I had finished the two stables. My dad and sister was not yet back from the workshop. So I decided to go outside to the staff room to have a Coke from the refrigerator and watch some TV until they came back. We still had some work to do, but I felt deserved a break, and they would probably be back any minute. After just a few minutes of watching some boring reality show, drinking Coke, and having my second sandwich, I remembered I had left the circulation pump to the manure tank on out back. I put down my sandwich and went to the corridor towards the back door to turn it off. I opened the back door, stepped out, and was just about to open the hatch to the control panel when I saw something moving in the corner of my right eye. Just across the manure tank, I looked toward it, and it immediately stopped my heart. My entire body froze from fear. What I saw was something I had never seen before and really hope I'll never have to see again. Over on the other side of the manure tank, there was a huge animal leaned over the carcass of the pig we had left there earlier that day. The animal was faced away from me, so I could only see its back. At first, I thought it was a brown bear, but it had a tail, a long tail with long hair like the tail of a golden retriever. The animal was covered in dark gray and black fur with a wide, muscular upper body. And I could see the steam from its breath rising in the cold air. Suddenly, the animal stood up on its hind legs, and it was huge. I would guess maybe 220 to 240 centimeters tall. It turned its head slightly to the right, nose toward the sky, and its mouth. This is what really got me. It opened its mouth to toss a piece of the meat down its throat. The head was definitely the head of a wolf, but much bigger and darker. It had a long furry ears, pointed. They pointed directly upwards, and a long snout with big canine teeth. We have both wild wolves and bears living in this area, but this was something else, bigger, stronger, and it felt more evil. 
The animal leaned down over the pig carcass again to continue to feast on its meal. I realized it had not yet noticed me standing there. Outside the door behind it, I was so scared. I didn't know if I should scream, cry, or faint. My body was still frozen, and I couldn't move. I finally find the strength to silently walk backwards, back inside to softly closing and locking the door, even when inside I tried to run, through the corridor as quiet as possible to lock the front door as well. I didn't want to give that monster a chance to get inside. I walked back to the door to the stable number two that had windows facing the backside where the creature where I looked into the stable through the window and the door. The windows on the wall was about two meters up from the floor and I could only see the steam from its breath rising in the air outside. Suddenly, one of the pigs saw me through the door window, and it started to grunt loudly. Soon, they were all grunting very loudly, as they always do when they see a person at the door, excited and hoping I was bringing them food again. I looked back to the window just in time to see the creature when a 12-year-old didn't have its own mobile phone, I was so afraid. I wanted to call my dad. I ran to the staff room that didn't have any curtains or blinds. I didn't dare go inside, risking that the creature would turn up on the front side of the building and see me through the window. I sat down in the corner between the doors of the staff room and the front door. And now I couldn't hold it in anymore. I started crying like never before. I was sure the monster would get inside. And if it did, it would hear me, crying, and find me. Suddenly the door handle on the front door violently turned and something tried to push the door open. I screamed, and the handle turned again, followed by two loud thuds in an attempt Sorry guys, it went crazy. In, a, in an attempt to gain access to where I was. And then I heard it the second time. I heard knocking on the door and my dad's voice calling for me. I rush up and locking, opening the door and telling my dad and sister to hurry inside, locking the door as they did. When I turned to my dad, he saw that I was crying and he asked, What is wrong? I told him the whole story of what I called the werewolf and he looked at me not saying a word. Then he looked at my sister. He looks back at me, and if I'm done feeding and cleaning the pens, I nod. He nods back, looking down at the floor, for a few seconds, and then back at us, telling us that the rest of the work can wait until tomorrow, and walks us to the house. In the evening, he went by himself to give the pigs their evening meal. Me and my sister was watching him from the upper floor of the house as he walked across the yard, hoping that the creature would not be hiding in the dark, ready to attack him. I remember him looking all around him with a flashlight as he walked. When he came back, I asked him if he had seen the dead pig on the back side. Ha, he said. What was left of it? He said it looked like some predator had found it and dragged the rest of it to the forest. After his incident, my dad was very clear we were not allowed to go outside after dark. As I got older, I've been thinking about it and that day and how my dad reacted after I told him what happened following the strict rules about never go out after dark. Dad, did he know this creature existed and it was lurking in the forest surrounding the farm? Did he have the rules never to go outside after dark because he knew that what the forests were hiding and what was surrounding the farm? Has he seen it himself? My dad later passed away from a terrible disease some years later, before I had a chance to ask him. But it was just the way my dad looked at me, like he knew what was out there and the new harsh rules that he had developed for us. Do you guys think my dad knew what was out there? Or do you think he seen it the same night I did and that's what caused the new rules? What do you guys think? I think his dad probably had not seen it till that night would be my guess and that's why the new rules were automatically made. Uh, killing the pig, leaving the fresh blood out there, probably caught the attention of something coming through would be my guess. What do you guys think? I'd like to see uh, what your thoughts is on this. 
Guys, don't forget tonight, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, come and join us on the live, interact with us. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select the all to get all of our latest not uh, notifications and video uploads. We can't wait to spend time with you, and don't forget, keep your head on a swivel, and don't be something's dinner. Thank you.